All right, in today's how-to video, I'm gonna teach you how to turn this into this. So the first thing I'm gonna do to start getting this going along was, I had a tree that was actually just on the other side, I had a little fence there uh, previously that fell on a greenhouse that I had sitting right here. So I cut it down. I had a big, huge stack of firewood or wood, I should say, that I did not want to haul off to the landfill. So what I did was I just took some cinder blocks, stacked them all together, and burned it. That was a whole lot uh, easier, I guess. It took a little, you know, a few days worth of burning, but I got it all burned down, and uh, it's gone. So it's now out of my life. But now I'm left with this ugly, nasty-looking thing that sort of resembles a fire pit, but not really. I'm gonna make it look like a nice, proper fire pit. The first thing I'm gonna do is clear all these old blocks out of the way. So I got my bricks out of the way, my cinder blocks. Next thing I did was I just kind of dug out a uh, footing where the old footprint was. Now, if you're not sure where you're gonna put it, like I was, you know, I just, like I said, removed the blocks and uh, dug out where the blocks were sitting before. But you could always lay the blocks out on the ground where you want it, stand back, say, hey, is this where I want this thing to go? And then you can come back with a little spray paint marking paint just kind of mark out the perimeter of where those blocks are at and then dig your uh, trench from there so I've got this all done next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some concrete in my barrel my wheelbarrow right there mix it up and then put it down in this trench all right then submit so to mix up your concrete what you do is just grab your bag of concrete I'm using the fast setting concrete because I had somebody sitting around in the garage and when I put in these fence posts the other day but what you do is just take the bag of concrete, empty it into your wheelbarrow. I got a bag and a half right here. I could probably mix two bags at once uh, in this size wheelbarrow. But what you do is put it in there, spray some water on top. I usually just mist it over the top, start mixing it all together. This is about the consistency you want. It's not too runny, but it's not too dry. You've definitely got water in all of your concrete. Um, but if you get it too thin, it weakens the concrete. Now this doesn't necessarily need to be like the strongest thing ever, but I want it to be, you know, as strong as it can be given the materials that I'm using. So from here, I'm just gonna shovel the uh, concrete into my little trench here and I make it level with the ground level. Okay, so that bag and a half gave me almost half of where I need to go around. So the two bags ought to be able to finish it up. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up real quick and uh, get that in there. I wanna work quickly though, because this stuff is the fast setting concrete mix. Um, so I don't wanna let it set up too much before I start putting my bricks down on it. Okay, so I've got a little footing cord here. I'm gonna go ahead and start laying my bricks. I'm gonna start on this corner because that was the corner that I put down in the ground first. And I do not want it to start drying up on me before I have the chance to level the blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, setting the blocks in place, and making sure they're level using a level. Okay, so you've set your first cinder block down in position. Um, what you want to do is make sure that it's level. You can see this here is a little bit off. I want to make it as perfect as I can. So the way you're going to accomplish this is a couple different ways. You're going to try to push it into position, or you can pick it up and drop it into position. Or even better would be to take like a two by four or something and set it across uh, the top of the block and just kind of give it a few taps with a hammer to get it to seat down in position. So I'm going to go ahead and level this block out, set down my next block. Okay, so you've got your first few blocks set down and leveled in. Another thing you want to do is make sure that they are uh, flush using some sort of straight edge going across both sides. Make sure everything's nice and square and level. You want it to look good when you're done. You want to be proud of your work. So go to continue on and lay those foundation bricks going all the way around. All right, so now you've got yourself a pretty good foundation laid out. I think what I'm going to do is mix up one more bag of concrete. Just kind of drop it down in the holes here. I don't want to fill them all the way up because I am going to fill all those holes completely in when I put that second row on. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and just put a little bit in there and I'm going to let that dry overnight before I come back and put that second row. Okay, so I'm impatient. I changed my mind. I went ahead and stacked the uh, next layer of bricks on, mixed up some more concrete. I'm going to drop it right down in the holes. Uh, my concern is that the footing wouldn't have enough time to cure, but I really don't think that's going to be a problem, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I went ahead and sprayed down the inside of the bricks a little bit with a little water, just kind of misted it in. That'll help the uh, new concrete bond with the old concrete and uh, or the old cinder blocks, I should say. 
and that'll make everything stick together nicely and make a nice tight bond, make a nice strong uh, fire pit. Okay, so what I'm doing at this point is just filling the holes to the top and then patting it down with a two by four to make sure it gets down on all the little crevices and everything. I'm not gonna fill it all the way to the top because I am gonna build a concrete form to make a topper to go on top and I wanna have that, give that a little bit of room to kind of sink down into the blocks and make a nice tight bond. Nice. Okay, so it's been a couple weeks. It's now like 90 degrees outside, sweating everywhere. So I put my canopy up. But what I'm gonna do now is I just mixed up some concrete and I'm gonna fill these little holes here and use a trowel or a concrete float to level it out nice and level. Just to kind of show you where I'm going with this, I bought some slate. I'm gonna put that around the sides. And I bought this stuff. I'm gonna put around the top and I'm gonna use a thin set mortar to achieve that goal. But I'm gonna start with smoothing out the top so I've got a nice uh, level surface to uh, lay those bricks down on top. And then I'm gonna put my slate on the side first so I have to set up, set up my tile saw and all that stuff. So follow along. So after a little bit of packing down and smoothing out with my concrete float, this is the goal you're going for. You want it to be nice and level with the top of the stone. Um, that way when you come back and put your mortar on, you have a nice good contact surface. Okay, so I've got my tile, tile saw out. And I went ahead and cut these sections down to three and a half inch sections. That gave me three pieces per piece of tile with a little bit of extra. So that's gonna be waste most likely. You wanna mix your uh, mortar up to about the consistency of peanut butter, they say. So now from here, pardon me, I'm Holding the camera with one hand, trying to work with the other. And I just covered up my center line. So try not to do that, maybe put it on top of the tile. But uh, that's essentially what you want to do. Let's just kind of put this on there and get some nice notches going. And then stick your tile right on it. Um, obviously you want to get a nice pattern all the way around. I just wanted to show you the process real quick of how you do that. Okay, so since you are actually hanging this up on the wall, you want to use the smaller trowel because I was using a fatter one and I forgot that you're supposed to use a smaller one. The reason being is because the fatter one puts those big, thick, fat lines like that and that's allowing the tile to slide down the wall. I can't get it to stick where I want it. So I'm going to actually transition to the smaller trowel, which is actually the one you're supposed to use for wall tile. I had just forgotten that. It's been a while since I've done tile. But uh, yeah. That's what we're going to do, same process, and I think instead of centering it, I'm just going to start on one end, come down, and then stagger it down the middle. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to use as many hole tiles as I can. So instead of cutting a bunch of ones on the end, because this one was going to be right here on the end and have like a couple inches, I would have had to cut it. And I don't want to have to do that. So I'm going to actually start on the corner. So yeah, I'm going to get to this, Do put a few tiles up, show you what I got. Okay, so if your tiles are being really stubborn like mine were, kept wanting to fall and all that stuff, I went ahead and took a couple of other pieces of tile and just wedged it up underneath it to kind of hold it in place while it dries. But I just wanted to make sure that I got everything nice and level on the top here. Um, got it nice and flush with the sides, as you can see. Pit, and you can see how I did the corner. I just kind of overlapped it like that. And uh, I'm going to wait to do this bottom row. Um, because obviously this is holding this up, so I'm just gonna continue to make my way around the fire pit. Okay, so this is what I'm currently looking at. I went ahead and did those first three rows on top, and as you can see, I'm using scraps to kind of brace up the bottom so that the, uh, the slate doesn't try to slide down the wall. But I would say that it's looking pretty good at this point. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is because I've gotta wait for that to dry before I start to do that bottom row. So I'm going to start laying down the uh, bricks that go along the top. So I think after laying the bricks out a little bit, this is the pattern I've settled on. Um, what I'm going to do is butt a brick up against this side here. As you can see, just kind of line it up. And then I'm going to line this brick up along this edge. And then I'll run it all the way down. And I need to cut a brick to go here. And then I'll do the same thing here. Line this brick up with the edge of this this brick up at the edge of this and then we'll run it down until it meets the next one and so on and so forth repeat that pattern all the way around 
and uh, I'll just have to cut those four pieces. They'll fit right in after that. Okay, so just a tip. Inevitably, you're gonna get a little bit of mortar on the stone. So you wanna have a bucket with water and a sponge handy. So you can just kind of give that a quick cleanup. Just give it a quick wipe and uh, that'll be the end of that. Okay, so like we talked about with this uh, upper row of bricks, um, you can see what I've done. I started on the corner, cut a brick there, started on the corner, cut a brick there, started on the corner, cut a brick here. Same thing right here. Now the way I cut the bricks, I had actually purchased um, a masonry uh, grinding wheel, but I actually ended up taking the guard off my web saw and using that. If you do that, make sure that you use eye protection because uh, little bits of this stuff will, without that guard there, come flying around. You don't want to get any of that stuff in your eye. That's really bad stuff. But the way I did it was I just measured from one point to the other to get an exact measurement. And uh, then I used the ruler on my wet saw to cut it. So the last part is you just come back and do the bottom row. I figured there was plenty of time for this to dry, or for this to dry while I was doing this part. So I went ahead and removed the supports that I had put in place and uh, everything looks like it's good to go. I'm just gonna do this bottom row and as you can see, what I've had to do, well you can maybe see it here a little better, I've had to trim some of the edges and stuff because there are chunks of concrete like right here. Um, but I'm back buttering these tiles really well and I'm sticking them right in place. Uh, so that's pretty much the last step you've got to do to get this thing going. Let's do that bottom row and then uh, you've got yourself a fire pit. I'll make sure I snap pictures of it so you see what it looks like when it's all done.